Hello. Do you want to play a game? Hell no, I don't want to play no game. Take that squeaky ass tricycle and get up on out of here. <laughs> Guys, it's Halloween 2023, and what better way to roll in the spooky season by saying Saw is back. Saw is Halloween. Just got back from the theater. We checked out Saw X, and I gotta say, I like what I saw for the most part. You know, it looked like Saw, it felt like Saw. The imagery was all in line with the dirty industrial locations. You know, Tobin Bell does his thing. He's got a, an increased uh, role in this one, which I thought was a super cool play on a, a lot of what the Saw movies have kind of moved away from in the last few sequels, where he's just like the game master. He gives you the creepy the intro on the tape recorder, and then he's not really in the movie because, you know, reasons in the franchise. You know, he's kind of been dead for like seven parts. But this one takes place between parts one and two, so it's kind of a prequel, sidequel to the rest of the things that come later. So it's cool to see Tobin Bell get to expand and actually interact with a lot of the characters in the movie directly, in person without the glass in between them for a good portion of it. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, the, the score when it comes up, the bump up, bump up, bump up, bump up, bump Like when that hits, it's like, okay, this is Saw. This all works. Mixed bag of traps in this one. They're, they're always sickly inventive, I'll give them that, but they were kind of simple this time through, except for um, the, the opening one was, was pretty good, and I thought it was going to work a different way. I must have missed a detail when he said it out loud. You can see it here in the movie poster. Um, that was kind of savage, and there was another particularly gory one that comes later. But a lot of it was actually kind of mid for Saw. It was, it, what, not that it was sanitized by any stretch, because, you know, Saw's never here to disappoint when it comes down to the gore. Um, but they definitely, I think, shied away from a lot of the on-screen kind of violence that went down. I'm not sure if maybe they got the ratings hack from the MPA or anything, but it, it, was, it seemed like it was toned down. But in toning it down, they gave a lot more time to the development of John Kramer's character, to his early plight with the cancer diagnosis, to some of the allies that he's made. Because, uh, spoiler, but not really a spoiler, because I probably won't tell you all of it. Um, no fewer than two of John Kramer's uh, pig mask disciples are in the flick. Make sure you stay tuned through the credits at the end. They give you a little MCU um, mid-credit reel. It's not the very end, it's mid-credit, um, where you get a reveal about one more of the characters from the movie that you thought might have got away. Uh, but also he's working with John Kramer. Uh, there's another character working with John Kramer that you know from before. So stick around through the mid credits so you can see that. I don't want you to miss it because people in the audience were, that I was with, we were shocked and it got a it got a little isolated, you know, clap a roof for that kind of stuff. Um, plot differences here that were super cool. The tables actually get turned on John, uh, AKA Jigsaw at one point in this movie, which I thought was kind of cool. He's always got the whole step ahead thing going on. But here he had to account for some variables. And of course, while we know, no spoiler here, he wins out in the end because he's, you know, alive through the next movie and a half or whatever. He was never in any actual danger, but it was still, it was cool to see how he was one step ahead of people that thought they were one step ahead of him. That was kind of cool just to see that it, it turned in him having to react in real time. Um, drawbacks to the film, for sure. It's Saw. I know, I know. It's not It's not The Godfather. You know, it's not Citizen Kane. It's not Indiana Jones, E.T., where like all these things are supposed to be thought out and, you know, the plot moves from A to B to C to D and it kind of just makes sense. That's not what Saw has ever been about. You've got to move mountains of contrivances to make this one happen. And I'll give it to you a case in point example. John Kramer in the movie is in Mexico seeking, you know, an, off, an unauthorized treatment in the States for his cancer. So he goes down there, gets the treatment, realizes there's some shenanigans going on. And when he has to set the plan into motion, and again, I'll let you guys see the movie for yourselves. I don't want to ruin the plot because when it comes up, it, it kind of makes sense and it makes it personal. But when he has to set all these things in motion, I'm kind of like, all right, well, you're like 1,800 miles from where you live in California or whatever. How on earth did you move all this heavy equipment, the, the intricate gear works, you know, the, the, the trap designs? How did you get all this shit in a place in like less than a day? Like you're not some time traveling Bruce Wayne billionaire Batman guy. Like, no, nah, dude, you flew down to get a cancer treatment. How did you do this? Like it's beyond, it's like you got to suspend disbelief of horror flicks. But this one I struggled with a little bit because I said to myself, if this was in LA or if this was in California where he's from, he might have had some of this stuff lying around because this is like this is a sequel directly to part one. So he's already established as Jigsaw when the shit hits the fan at the end of the movie that the villains slash victims, however you want to look at them, they know he's Jigsaw. They finally figure out the name and I'm kind of like, OK, well, you know, you knew who he was. If he was in California, he might have had all this stuff. 
the accomplices could have had it nearby. He might have had a location all scouted out. No, like that's that's not how it went down here at all. So it was, it was a little, it was a little. What's the word I'm looking for here? Not nerve wracking, but it was difficult to look past it. I'll say. The other major contrivance that kind of just annoy me is when, you know, they do the requisite. We're going to capture the victims kind of bit. When they come to and he's kind of announcing what his intentions are, and they start pleading with him, they try to hold on to the facade that they had perpetrated earlier on. And they basically appeal to his, you know, his human side, saying, you know, we we're just trying to help you, John. We you know, we didn't do anything. We we're trying to help. And I'm like, yeah, but you tried to help him with like an experimental surgery for like the, the yeah, the cancer. And when he figured out there was no scar on his scalp, like you're still trying to perpetrate that lie. Like you're looking at this dude's head with no bandages, no skull cap, no nothing. And you're trying to, what, fake him into thinking that you did the thing that you told him you were going to, I don't know. That just kind of annoyed me a little bit with that. I was kind of like, guys, come on. This guy's got a 500 IQ. You know, he's jigsaw now. Like, fuck, like you, you're not going to fool him into being like, oh, my bad guys. Let him go. You know what? Let them go. They, it, no, it's cool. It's cool. It wasn't them. No, stupid. That, that was that was a bit much. Um, and then, you know, my final gripe about the film, and, and don't get me wrong, I had fun because I liked the Saw franchise. I like it, it expanded its lore to a point. It roped in a couple of accomplices and, you know, disciples, we call them, because they buy into the Kramer cult kind of thing. And then it, it kind of, it's it's staying put. Like, it's not trying to go ridiculous, as unridiculous as Saw could get. But I'll say this about a gripe as far as this Saw goes final victim weak sauce my god like if this was salsa it'd be less than mild i've never seen somebody get off so easy in a saw movie and that's not to say this person survived they might not have but the situation at the end i'm waiting like this this person's in a fairly vulnerable spot and they're doing a whole lot of yelling at john as he's walking away with his accomplices and this and that and in their compromised spot, I'm looking around like, all right, so when's this guillotine blade going to come down, you know, and take this person's head off? And I'm like, and it just doesn't happen. Like, it literally fades to white and just says Saw X on the screen. And I'm like, come on. This person deserved way worse than what they got. Like, the accomplices that got got, they got got bad. A couple of them get absolutely roasted, carved up, and whatnot. And it was everything that Saw is supposed to be at that point where you get the morality tale about the choices you make and what you're willing to do to survive. But I thought they went way too easy on a, on a particular couple of the um, the villain victims, I call them, especially the final person. But that's it for me, guys. Saw X, if you're a fan of the franchise and you can handle the fake gore and all that good stuff, you'll probably enjoy it. Uh, go check it out. I, it's a perfect movie for the Halloween season. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you get out what you thought of it in terms of sequels, in terms of just the movie itself. Love to hear back from you guys. Uh, click like and um, all that other good stuff. The King's E is much better about spouting off at the mic. I'm more interested in the conversation about the movie. But if you want to sub to the channel and keep us in business and have that exchange, we're always down for it. Until then, I will see you guys in the next one.